person that lit up the church. See, you are all very, very important. I have some, I'm going to have some fun today, okay? I, I know maybe for some people they think they shouldn't have fun in, in church, but I've, I've been looking forward to doing this message for a long time, okay? You know, today more than ever before, we have more troubles that are besetting us, racial problems, suicides, unwanted pregnancies, political correctness, and the list goes on. You can fill in the blanks with whatever you want. People tell us all the time, and I hear it all the time, that the, that the answer to these problems and, inf- and situations are information. The trouble is we live in the age of information. You can go to the internet today and within several hours gain more information than several generations previously had accumulated in their lifetime. Yet with this abundance of information, our problems are greater. You know why? Because information alone doesn't change a heart. It takes the power of the blood of Jesus and the infilling of his Holy Spirit. Over in Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, it reads, The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of his glory, of the mysteries among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. What we're going to do today is we're going to put together a puzzle. And I'm going to need all of your help when I call you up here. Okay, number one, I need Kareen to come up, okay? And what I want you to start here with this piece of puzzle, we're going to put it over here in the corner, okay? Remember, the quicker you come, the shorter the sermon, hallelujah, okay? We're going to put it right up here, okay? Thank you, Kareen, okay? And we're going to find out as each piece of the puzzle is put into place, the bigger picture becomes more clear, okay? And the same is with our lives. Richard, I'm going to give you the honors. Number two, okay? If you put that in there. There you go. JD, would you come up here, please, sir? There you go, JD, if you put that in there. There you go. I'm going to ask. There you go. I'll take that. I'm going to ask Colleen to come up, please. Colleen? There you go. If you just put that right where there, yep. How about Tucker? You know, Tucker, I was really proud of you. You stayed awake during the whole thing up here, okay? I don't know what happened to Tucker, but uh, he looked pretty tired, okay? Okay. Thank you. I'm going to ask Lori and Ayla. Come on up. I'm going to have you put that right in here. Right around in there. Thank you. I'm going to ask Matt. Did I see Matt? He maybe went down with the kids. Oh, Stark. Uh, Matt, Cassie. Come on up, Cassie. I think you're you're right, right over here. Yep. Yep. Yeah, there you go. How about Jared and Jennifer, one or the other? I don't care, both. That's fine. Got elected, huh? (laughs) There you go. How about Kim? And then Blake. Thank you, Blake. You done puzzles before? Good. Oh, good for you. You can get that to Maryland. There you go. As you see here with our puzzle, things are starting to come together here, okay? But it's amazing in our world, folks, in this identity crisis that people are trying to find out who they are, 
what they believe in, and where they're going. And so they seem like they're more puzzled than a piece of the puzzle. It's amazing, though, because people are receiving answers to these questions, but finding no peace, no tranquility, no lasting fulfillment, what they're living for. What I really do is I see a lot of people, and they seem like they are very puzzled in life instead of a piece of the puzzle. Why I believe, folks, is because they can't find any lasting peace and tranquility and fulfillment is because they need to realize it's not my will, but your will be done. Not my life, but your life, Lord Jesus. Not my dreams, but your dreams, Lord Jesus. Not my ideas, but your ideas, Lord Jesus. It says over in First, at first Peter chapter 5, First Peter chapter 5, verses 5 and 6, it says, Young men in the same way be submissive to those who are older. Well, you know, in the words of probably Ron, that means about everybody has to submit to you, Ron. Hallelujah. You're one of our older ones, okay? All of you clothe yourselves with humility towards one another because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that he may lift you up in due time. We need to realize that we are all pieces of a larger puzzle or plan than just ourselves. God has gifted each and every one of you to be joined together with a larger dream than ourselves. He has gifted us to be joined together with the body of Christ, his church. And if you look at the puzzle, you see they're fitting jointly together and it's becoming not a symphony, but a portrait almost, okay? Over in John chapter 3, verse 30, the, uh, the, uh, John the Baptist said about Jesus, and I've told you this before, I admire John the Baptist because he really had a ministry. Everybody was flocking to his ministry, and he saw Jesus, and he said to Jesus when he saw him, he says, I, he must increase and I must decrease. See, until we come to the same conclusion that John the Baptist did, that we're a piece of the puzzle, not the creator of the puzzle, We will live a life puzzled not knowing that what we were intended for and to be interlocked with other people. See, God didn't make us to be people to ourselves. This piece of puzzle here, if it's by itself, it's pretty well worthless. But you'll see it has places where it interlocks with each other. Now we're going to, I'm going to have the next 10 uh, uh, pieces put together here. And who would I have here? I have... Okay, Marilyn, I'm going to have you come up and do number 11, okay? We're going to go over here. Okay, Logan, if I have you come up. Number 12. I'm going to have... uh, I'm going to have, actually, Lisa come up. Okay, Lisa, you come up. Well, you'll have to find that out, dear. Okay. There we go. We're happy for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to actually have, if I could have uh, Joey, would you come up, Joey? Thank you, Joey. Put that up there. Got her, Joey? Hey, Joey's one of our seniors this year, okay? Okay, Addie, why don't you come on up? You have to find out where that goes. There we go. One of our freshman finest, okay? Why don't we try Tom? Come on up, sir. You're starting to see a picture, aren't you? But see, all these pictures, pieces individually, aren't going to help us much. Look for the flat edges. The flat edges. 
There we go. Yeah. Pretty bad when we give them a round of applause for putting a piece of a puzzle together. You know that? Hallelujah. Okay. Well, what we're going to do here, I'm, I'm going to ask Tamara if you'll come up, please. She knows what she's doing, okay. <laughs> Seth or Megan? Go ahead, yeah, isn't that nice? Yeah, we're going to have to put that right in there. Yep, thank you, sir. You know, my measurator must not be right, okay? Okay, we're going to, there we go. I might end up, should I put that on a, no, we're going we're gonna to be okay. Okay, what we're going to do here, Allie, where is Allie? Okay, this will be tough because now we're going to see if Allie can find the new piece. Okay, do you understand? There you go. That was number 19. But you know what? Number 20 is missing. Okay? So we're going to keep moving on here. Okay? It's kind of interesting here in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 15 and 16. It says, Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is head, who is Christ, for whom the full, whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament. Do you see what's starting to happen here? Each piece holding the other piece together. That's like a church, okay? And it grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. See, when we learn to work within the will of God for our individual lives, life becomes less complicated and more fulfilling. Life becomes less puzzling and more fulfilling because why? You find your place in Him, I want to read us quickly over in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And the Apostle Paul, he didn't talk about puzzles on that day, but he talked about the body, the physical body. Over in 1 Corinthians, we're going to go verse 12, or chapter 12, verses 14 through 20. And look at what Paul says. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear would say, because I am not of an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? And if the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he pleased. And And if there were all one member, where would the body be? But now, indeed, there are many members, yet one body. What are we seeing? Each piece of the puzzle is different. What happens if they were all corner pieces? We couldn't have a puzzle. What happens if they're all one piece? Do you understand what I'm saying? Everybody is different, but when we come together and join together in the cause of Christ, we all start interlocking with each other. See, folks, I believe there are three plans for your life. And I'm going to go over them very quickly this morning. I think there's three plans for your life. Number one, you have God's plan for your life. Number two, I think you have the world's plan for your life. And number three, you have the devil's plan for your life. Over in Jeremiah chapter 29, 11, I think this is God's plan for your life. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. See, when you and I acknowledge God in our life and follow his plans for our life, it leads to peace and it leads to God's best for your life. See, God's plan for you is for you to have a very good life. The second plan is the world's plan. The world's plan does not necessarily come from bad people. I tell people this many times. When I was growing up, after I gave up my, after I gave my heart to the Lord, and I told my mom I wanted to be a pastor. My mother was not a Christian at the time, and I, I was a semester away from graduating with a bachelor's degree in business management. My mother told me, she said, Jeff, go into the business world, and if you can't make it in the business world, then you can be a pastor. My mother meant well, but you know what? She had a different plan for me. 
Okay? And it doesn't mean my mom was bad. That just wasn't God's plan for me. Look what it says in Acts chapter 21, verses 12 through uh, 14. This is when the Apostle Paul is getting ready to go back to Jerusalem and the end of his life. This is when we heard this, we and the people there pleaded with Paul not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, why are you weeping and breaking my heart? I am ready not only to go bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus, whom he would not be dis- uh, when he would not be dissuaded, we gave up and said, the Lord's will be done. See, people may mean well, but it's your responsibility, it's my responsibility to find God's will for our life and then fulfill it. Moms and dads are wonderful and we need them all, but they don't always know. I know there was a show many years ago, Father Knows Best, but I tell you what, Heavenly Father Knows Best. And so the world's plan is not necessarily a bad plan, but it's not the divine plan for your life. And you need to find that. You know, I tell people this many times. If I would have listened to my mother, and like I said, my mother was not a bad person. But if I would have listened to my mother and got into the business world and not been a minister, you know what? When I, I could have been a great Christian businessman, but when I got to heaven, God would have judged me according to his call in my life, not what my mom wanted me to do. And so we need to find out where we are in this piece because that's what we're going to be held accountable for. And then the last plan we find out the Bible talks about is the devil's plan. And John 10, 10 at the very beginning, this is the devil's plan for your life. The Bible says the devil or the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's the devil's plan for your life. See, God's plan is he wants to prosper you. The world's plan is maybe it's not the best for you, but they're thinking more about feelings. God's or the devil's plan is he wants to steal, kill, and destroy from you. The devil's plan never adds life to you. In the long run, it only steals and takes away. You know, I remember, and I'm sure some of you do, when maybe before you were a Christian and you were out in the world, you were having a lot of fun. And I remember people might come up and say, you should not be doing that. It's not fun. It is fun. The Bible says sin is fun for a season. That season may last a long time, it may last a short time. And so what the devil will try to come along and tell you, let's go out and have some fun. But I'm here to tell you, in the long run, the devil's plan only steals, kills, and destroys from your life. See, if the devil tried to destroy God's plan for the life of Jesus, if you remember, he came and told Jesus, if you're the son of God, turn this into the, the rocks and the bread. If you're the son of God, jump off the temple. See, if the devil's going to try to come in and steal and kill and destroy from the life of Jesus, I know he's going to try to come in and steal and kill and destroy from our lives. So what we have to do is what Jesus did. He constantly told the devil, it is written. Jesus knew the word of God, and we need to know the word of God. It says in Romans chapter 11, verse 29, for God's gifts and, and his callings are irrevocable. Another translation says there that, they're, that he will not take them back. See, our callings, our giftings, isn't just something we put on Sunday morning. And our, you know what? Our giftings and our callings are a life time pursuit. It's a full-time occupation that we need to pursue and perfect while we're on this world. God has a plan for all of us. Now we're going to finish up with our puzzle here, okay? Next up here I have Robin and Katie and Dean, whoever wants to come up. This is, you know, it's amazing the women prefer their husbands so much in this exercise. Okay. Don't laugh at him, okay? Uh, there you go. Good Dean. <laughs> Next we have Doug or Jackie. Okay. Now you know why she didn't want to come up, right? I 
I think maybe yeah. that away. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, uh, uh, okay, yeah. Excuses don't count here, okay? No. I, I want you to know that, okay? There you go. Thank you. Yeah. I know, there you go. We have that little bar right there, yep. Uh, yeah, we do. I have a limitless budget, okay, on my props. I want you to know this, okay? I actually thought that this was a little wider. I wouldn't have used this. There we go. Maybe. No, it doesn't, dare. There you go. We'll do that. Yep, we're getting there. Next, I need Reed or Amy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She did that pretty. She doesn't need any help, Reed, okay? Next, I'm going to have Chris or Christine. Or JC or Jordan. It doesn't matter. No. <laughs> there we go. Next, Dan or Kay. He wants the sermon to get over quick, you see that? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we're going to have to wait. There you go. She's a mom. She's done that many times, okay? Next, Gwen or Daryl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All that time you gained by running, you lost in your Thank you. I'm going to ask maybe I want Twyla to come up, please. And maybe you can bring her up. Can you bring her up, Elisa, maybe? Yep. You know, you see, we're using different people from different generations because we're all part of the piece of the puzzle. You might want to help your mom, too. Oh, thank you, Twyla. I'm going to ask Lori to come up. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, here, you, you thought you were going to get the easy piece, didn't you? There we go. Yep. Go. There we go. And gauge. There we go. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Well, what's happened? We're missing a few pieces, aren't we? And you know what? What happens when we maybe decide not to come to church on a Sunday morning? Maybe, you know what happens? The church, the whole picture of the beauty of the church isn't seen. Maybe a lot of it is, but maybe you're the piece 
that somebody needs to see. And so we need to fill in these different areas. So what I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask Lori Tremaine to come up here. See, when we're missing, it takes away from all the beauty. Thank you, Lori. And almost, isn't it amazing? I mean, this doesn't look bad, but would any of you be satisfied with that? Isn't it amazing? One piece missing can have an influence on the whole picture. And you know what? I'm not here to try to tell you that you should never miss church because you're going to have activities, you're going to have family things. But do you know that maybe when you decide not to come on a Sunday, somebody's walking through those doors and they need to see the whole picture that tells you how important you are. And then I'm going to ask Ron to come up since I picked on him. And he's going to put on the finishing touches there. What what is that, saints? The picture of the church. I had that made for us. We're going to put that up here because I want you to know that you're a piece of the puzzle. And, you know, as you look at this, I don't know about you, but I love green grass. I love blue skies. Maybe God's made you the blue sky or the green grass. Maybe he's made you one of the tree limbs. Do you understand? It's all important in there. Don't ever think that you're not important, Okay. With each piece of this puzzle, when it finds its proper place, the design that the author of the puzzle had in mind becomes clearer and more clear. This is what happens to the church when the members find their God-given gifts and their God-ordained place. Oneness out of many pieces, beauty out of chaos. When I bought this uh, months ago, they brought it in here. It was just in a bunch of pieces. It was chaos. But then when you started finding where the pieces went, beauty came out of it. That's what we need to realize, that God has beauty for your life. When we get connected, we bring more meaning to our own life. And you know what else we do? We bring more meaning to the bigger picture. When everybody was coming up here, they uh, they might think, what's the corner? Not very important. Yes, it is. It brings the bigger picture clearer. See, God didn't give us a gift not to get connected. If we don't get connected, our gift will never have the significance that God intended it to have. It doesn't matter how wonderful your gift may be unless you and I are willing to get connected to something bigger than ourselves, we'll just be a lost piece of the bigger puzzle. I don't know, have have you ever done a puzzle? I wanted to get the simplest one, 30 pieces. Have you ever done like maybe a 500 or a 1,000 piece puzzle and you're getting it all together and then at the end you find out what? There's one piece missing. I bet you're thrilled anyway, aren't you? No, you're thinking, it's missing. Isn't it amazing? Maybe 499 are there, but the 500th is gone. See, God has called us all to be connected together. Every piece of the puzzle is different because each piece Peace adds its own uniqueness. It's as you and I add all these pieces together that the puzzle becomes one and the beauty of each piece complements the different other pieces. This summer, let's make coming to church a priority and let the whole community see the total picture at Christ the King every week. Not maybe just half, maybe not two-thirds, maybe not three-fourths. Okay, that's one reason why the church council decided to move uh, service 45 minutes earlier so we can make sure everybody could still get here and we can show our community the whole picture. This summer, I believe we're not going to have a drought. We're not going to have a downward trend in our attendance. We're not going to have a downward trend in our Bible reading. We're not going to have a downward trend in our giving. We're not going to have a downward trend in our praying. We're not going to have a downward trend in our witnessing. You know why? Because we are part of the big picture. And I think God deserves that. Okay? Because your gift is needed year-round to show the whole picture. 
You know, membership class we have this afternoon, okay? And maybe you need to come and fill and see a few, uh, see if this is where God wants you. Because you know what? It's interesting. I'm going to move a little bit here. I can do that with my wire. Look at that nice picture right there. I, this was downstairs. This was downstairs. This was a picture of the church taken 30 years ago. It's changed, but it has it, right? And you know, I was asking, that's why I looked on the back, it said, presented to the First Presbyterian Church by Mr. and Mrs. Richard Doma and family. <laughs> on November 15, 1980. That's why I asked you when Jenna was born. I want to know, was she born when you gave this picture, okay? But look at this. See, the, cha- the picture changes, but it stays the same. You know what I know is God continues to grow our church. You know what's going to happen? The picture is going to change a little bit. But there's always going to be a place for another piece of the puzzle to come together. Yes, we'll always be Christ the King, but our church, our picture will continue to expand. And we're going to need every piece to be a part of that. Amen? I want to thank you because see, God has something wonderful for all of us. And when I saw that, it is really interesting because you know what? If we took this picture today, this would be changed already too. And so I want you to know that you are a vital piece of the puzzle. Don't be puzzled. Be a piece of the puzzle. And when you get connected with each other, you'll become stronger and your beauty will shine forth greater too. Amen. Well, what I, what I want to do here this morning, I want to, I, I forgot to ask, Dalton, would you be brave enough to come up and close with a prayer? Thank you. Come on up. Come on up, Dalton. Yeah, you got to come up here, okay? And, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, sometimes, Dalton, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission, okay? You don't want to know that. Yeah. And, you know, there's some people that get nervous if you give them a lot of head, a heads up, okay? But, you know, I am proud of Dalton. I'm proud of, of Logan and our seniors here. They have led by example. And I watched, the, especially the two seniors, as they prayed for these kids. When you come back and visit, we'll let you do that again. I want you to know that. Would you guys just bow your heads as Dalton closes with a prayer? Have everyone get Mm-hmm. Puzzle is one. So Lord, we know that puzzle is a church that is without empty pieces. That yes. We have empty pieces. So I ask you to help this whole congregation, all these people as individuals, bring that whole puzzle together. Mm-hmm. We know that our puzzle is complete yet. So we continue to grow as people, mm-hmm. to follow your plan, and to continue to live, to live today as a good day. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, not the future, but mm-hmm. today. To follow your plan. Thank you. Thank you, Dalton. Go ahead, Richard. Please stand and let's join together in a great praise and worship. And let's give one more round of applause for.